Hey guys, Ray again. This is part nine of the boat build. Yes. So part eight, we worked on the transom and part nine, we're gonna be working on the bow, making some changes and making a compartment that will hold foam in the event we have a catastrophic failure. We don't, uh, I don't have to worry about losing the boat in the water. Um, the sun has been brutal, which is why I've got this tent above me. Uh, I should have done this a while ago because it has been quite a summer. So let's get started. Okay, I thought I'd show you this, uh, something I did off camera. You can see these fillets that I did here and here. You can see them easier on this side. So nobody's going to see that. I figured to do an experiment. What that material is, is this right here. This is PL Premium. And if you go on all the boat forums and things, they'll tell you, oh, never use this stuff, never use this stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, if you are building a stitch and glue boat, if, if that's all you're doing with thin plywood, where you absolutely need the strength of epoxy then yeah I wouldn't use that but this boat is plenty strong and you can see it is pretty hard stuff it's not as hard as epoxy but I think that's why I like it because it's got just a little bit of flexibility now I did that there just as an experiment here it doesn't really need it uh, but I wanted to see if I would be able to use it elsewhere in visible areas and I don't like how lumpy it is but it's quite interesting so as you can see I rough cut this piece and I've got a gap here what I did was I scribed it from the top edge on the outside to give me enough material that I can actually get it to fit the shape of the boat the curve at the top and the curve at the bottom are different so I just approximated it very closely and now I'm gonna scribe it and to scribe it I'm just gonna use this and the reason I'm doing it this way is because I can't find my compass I have no idea where it is so what I did is I cut this piece of wood and I set it right there to the widest gap and I'm just gonna scribe this and then cut on the scribe mark now to do this make sure you're vertical all right now I'm gonna do the other side okay so as you can see I got that much tighter it's a much tighter joint it still is too far out uh, in this direction. I need to bring it in further, about another two inches or so. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rescribe this. I'm going to rescribe it on one side only. And what that will give me is it'll get me further up into the bow without removing too much material. If I do both sides, I might take off too much. So I could do one side and then the other and see where I am. Now in this case I'm going to keep track of which side I do first and the reason is as it goes up further the side contour will change a little bit so I'll be I will be doing this to each side little by little and approximating that curve much closer. So I went ahead and scribed this for a second time and notice how tight that joint is. Let me show you the other side that I scribed only on the first, to first time. So here's the other side. You can see that it's a little bit tight at the, and opens up as you go down. That gap is about a quarter inch wide on that side. So it was scribed to be much further down uh, on, the, on the sides here. Now that it's moved because I scribed this side, as you can see, this side is quite a nice tight joint. Um, that's just saw cut. Once I get it fine tuned, it'll be a, a tight joint. But now I'm going to scribe that second side that I've only scribed once, whereas this side has been scribed twice. And every time I scribe it, it's going to keep moving it further up the bow and fitting in a different place than the scribed curve. So I'm going to end up with small gaps here and there, and then I'll fine tune them. Okay, so I have scribed the other side and I got it really, really close. But now, of course, it's a little further up still. I've got about another quarter inch or so to go right here. So there's my two by, and I've got about another quarter inch to go in the back, and I've got to move forward. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn, instead of using the block this way and scribing a big gap, instead of using it like this, I'm going to turn it around and just use the pencil. And I can see that I am barely covering the wood. So I've got a low spot right here but I'm touching in the front. So I really need to clear up to this point here and the same on the other side. So 
I'm just gonna make two scribe marks. So basically it's the front eight inches is binding the board and that should carry me a little further. Uh, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and just gently cut that and try another fit. All right, so here's where we are. What happened off camera is I made this piece of wood to go here. Now, I made a mistake and I meant to only bevel the bottom corners, but I accidentally did the top corners. That's not gonna mess us up. That'll be fine, it won't matter. So that piece goes there, it's gonna close off that end. Our main triangular piece goes here. That's gonna close this off. Then we have another closure piece that goes like there. And our final piece at the top. This will close up the front, the bow, and give me a place to store things if I need to. Um, and more importantly, what it'll do is it'll allow me to have about two cubic feet of foam inside this space. Well, there it is. The front compartment is finished. I will drill a couple of small holes and fill it with foam. That is coming up next. I'm going to drill a couple of holes in this plywood so I can get the foam. I'm just going to use great stuff. This is a polyurethane foam. Uh, basically, all these foams are polyurethane foam. This I just picked up from the hardware store. I don't know if one can will do it, maybe it takes two cans. Um, I calculated that I have basically about 1.25 cubic feet underneath here, which makes me think that one can is going to be very, very close. So I'm going to drill a couple holes, and to make sure I start filling from the bottom, I'm going to use this, um, this basin connection tube is all that is. just so happens that it is the right diameter for my fill nozzle, so I'll be able to get all the way down to the bottom and fill up from the bottom up. Um, I'll just have to put a little tape on here to hold it together. Okay, interesting development. You might notice right here along this edge that it is now curved up. Before this point, it was straight across. So, to answer the question, did it fill the entire cavity? Well, it filled it up so far that there was not enough room for the expansion and it kept on pushing. So, I am pretty confident that the cavity is full 100% um, now and I had to take these bamboo skewers and actually poke them down as deep as I could to um, put in some relief vents. Uh, you can see that I poke, poke right there, you can see it very clearly. And uh, right here I poked some relief vents as far down as I could poke with a bamboo skewer. You can see I got at least 8 inches of a 12 inch skewer. And uh, yeah, it, uh, it's 100% uh, full. full. I got 100% confidence. And what gave it away is I was working on another part and I could hear some bubbling in here. So I poked holes in all of my existing holes 
just to give it some relief and sure enough this is what bubbled out um, and you can see there's even material that's not fully cured there it goes it's still bubbling and this was a few hours ago so it is still expanding it's still curing um, and you can see this is actually still soft this was several hours ago I filled it up so it's doing pretty good I am confident I've got a hundred percent fill in that cavity thank you all for watching please don't forget to like comment share and subscribe and hit that little bell to be updated on all my future videos